Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Sosinski, and I'm the Executive Medical Director of the Advent Health Cancer Institute in Orlando, Florida. I'm at ASCO 2024, and today we saw the presentation in the plenary session of two practice-changing uh, presentations. I'm going to talk about the first one first, which is the LORA trial. What we've learned in stage three non-small cell lung cancer is that the standard of care based upon the Pacific trial is the use of concurrent chemoradiotherapy followed by the use of dervolumab in the consolidation setting. One of the issues with the Pacific trial is the observation that there were A, a very small number of EGFR mutation positive patients, and B, when you looked at that population, knowing that immunotherapy does not help these patients very much, there was actually very little, if any, effect in the EGFR mutant patients. The LORA trial was launched to address the issue of consolidation therapy in the EGFR mutant space. We know that uh, EGFR TKI use in stage four and an early stage surgical disease based on the ADORA trial has a profound effect on disease-free survival as well as overall survival. What the LORA trial did was take the classic mutations in exon 19 and exon uh, 21. These were stage three patients suitable for chemo radiation. They completed their concurrent chemo radiation and within six weeks were randomized to osimertinib versus placebo. There was a dramatic difference in progression free survival, which was the primary endpoint of the trial. In fact, the hazard ratio was 0.16 uh, with a very powerful impact compared to placebo. The survival is trending positive in this particular case. However, it's very early follow-up and we have to wait further time to see the uh, impact on overall survival. But certainly there is a trend there. And I think given the significant magnitude of the benefit in this setting, that this becomes a new standard of care for patients with EGFR mutations with stage three following concurrent chemo radiation. Now, following on that theme, Another population where there's been an unmet need and really no change in the practice for more than 20 years is patients with limited stage small cell. Again, the Pacific trial suggested that using consolidation dervolumab uh, after concurrent chemoradiotherapy led to an overall survival advantage. This was tested in the Adriatic trial. Patients with limited stage small cell lung cancer uh, received concurrent chemoradiation and then were randomized uh, to dervolumab versus placebo. And here we saw, again, a benefit in progression-free survival as well as overall survival that was statistically significant, but also, I think, clinically very significant for this population of patients. Remember, there's really not been an advance in limited stage small cell in well over 20 years. So this really will offer a uh, better survival outcome for these patients. Uh, we know that we tell these patients that this is a potentially curative treatment. And I think what we've learned from the Adriatic trial uh, is that uh, this does increase the chance of being cured for these patients. So I think both the LORA and the Adriatic trial uh, do change practice. I will say that there were really no new safety signals with regard to the uh, side effect profile of either osimertinib or devolumab from either of these studies. Uh, so, um, again, I think these really are practice changing. There was, in fact, in the presentation, there was a loud applause and, and, and almost standing ovation once these results were released. That's how enthusiastic the audience was during the plenary session. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hello from ASCO 2024. My name is Peter Galler. I'm a hepatologist from Mainz University Medical Center. I have the privilege to present here the data of Checkmate 90W. This is the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab compared to investigator's choice, either lenvatinib or sorofenib, in first-line treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma in an unresectable situation. This is a positive trial. Benefit in terms of prolonged median overall survival, 20.6 for the control arm and 23.7 for the treatment arm. And what was very impressive to see is we see objective responses in 36% of our patients. So that will add to the armamentarium we have already. We have I'm Prey 150, Atezo Beva, we have Himalaya, Dova Tremi, and I believe that will result in approval of this combination, Nivo IP, in the future. The difficulty remains how to choose which option for which patients. But 
what is great, we have more orchids today. Thank you for your interest. Hi, my name is Shahina Daoud and I'm from the United Arab Emirates and I'm a consultant medical oncologist. I'm here at ASCO 2024 where we've seen some spectacular data looking at the management of patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. I feel that there were three very important pieces of data that will change clinical practice on Monday. The first is the Destiny Breast 06 trial that looked at patients with HER2 low and HER2 ultra low metastatic breast cancer hormone receptor positive patients who are endocrine resistant who are randomized to receive either trastuzumab duroxtecan or physician choice of chemotherapy and trastuzumab duroxtecan was the clear-cut winner in this cohort of patients. How does it impact my clinical practice? It allows me to use TDXD in an early line setting, as well as allowing me to look at those patients who are truly poor prognosis, very endocrine resistant, who need that extra edge in terms of a good drug that will improve both progression-free survival with also a strong trend in overall survival. We saw the post-Monarch study as well, a very interesting phase three clinical trial that took patients, again, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, metastatic breast cancer, who had progressed on first line CDK4-6 inhibitor, who were then randomized to receive either endocrine therapy alone or endocrine therapy plus abemaciclib. So essentially looking at CDK4-6 inhibitor beyond progression. Again, this was a positive study. Uh, favoring the group of patients who are taking a BMSIC clip plus endocrine therapy. Where will I attempt to use this particular protocol? Well, in patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative MBC, if they do not have a biomarker that I can target, I will consider looking at CDK4-6 inhibitor beyond progression. And this gives us an option for our patients. And then, of course, we saw the updated results of the Inova 0120 trial that looked at patients who had recurred very early post early stage setting, again, hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, who also had a pic 3 ca mutation, giving them triplet therapy with enovilacib plus palbociclib plus fulvestrin versus palbociclib plus fulvestrin. Again, the triplet therapy was a clear winner with a very significant improvement in the progression-free survival I'm not sure where we will use this protocol exactly in, in 2024. The approvals are not there yet. However, one needs to think about the fact that a lot of these patients may have already received adjuvant CDK4-6 inhibitor. So where does a triplet therapy regimen actually fit post-progression on adjuvant CDK4-6? So a lot of exciting data. I'm sure in the next couple of weeks, we're going to revise our algorithms to incorporate all the new data that we have. Um, but it's great to have all these innovative options for our patients to improve prognostic outcome. Thank you very much. So we're just back from the ease of pack plenary. Your take, Sam? Yeah, I think my take is that we've always known that our patients with localized esophageal adenocarcinomas die of metastatic recurrences. And now we have proof to say that FLOT beats cross improved survival for this population. So we are both medical oncologists, so we've always been probably a little bit biased towards team FLOT, but there never has been a head-to-head -head with these two treatments. This was a good trial, 400 patients across many German centers, standard esophageal and junctional cancers. And what we saw was across the board, FLOT was the winner. Better PAP CO rates, uh, better completion of treatment, and better disease control, a 30% improvement in uh, overall survival. Uh, are there any situations where you would use chemo radiotherapy? What about nivolumab? Yeah. Does that help? Those are going to be the questions for our multidisciplinary discussions, but I think that the upfront is clearly decided flat. These patients need systemic therapy. And someone who maybe is not going to make it to surgery or there's a concern about resectability, like adding radiation, I would only consider it after some real systemic therapy maybe a role, maybe there's a non-operative path that may require some radiotherapy, but take home message for us is FLOT is here, this is our standard, and this is what we're gonna be doing. Six months time, let's see the results of Matterhorn, maybe we'll be back here and there'll yeah. be another new standard of care. Agreed. But good result for patients today, it's shown us a clear way forward. Hey Lizzie, we just came out of the upper GI oral abstracts and saw some cool data. One of these was Renaissance, which was uh, you know, asking a surgical question in stage four patients. Tell me what your kind of high level takeaways were. So unfortunately, Renaissance was a negative trial. 
So it was asking the question whether we should operate on patients with advanced uh, gastroesophageal cancer, kind of like we do in colon cancer. 140 patients randomized, no significant improvement in overall survival for patients who had surgery. Also, a concern regarding high levels of perioperative mortality. We've got to remember that the surgery for these patients is difficult, especially retroperitoneal lymph nodes. I don't think that the question is closed. Their inclusion criteria were quite permissive, allowing up to five liver metastases. So I would like to revisit that question in future with slightly more stringent eligibility criteria and use of immune checkpoint inhibitors. I agree with you. I think there is a pathway forward to consider this still as a question to investigate. I think one of the other questions we saw investigated was what happens if you change therapy earlier at an arbitrary cut point? So the Armani trial from our Italian colleagues asked, if you are stable after three months of 5-FU platinum, should you switch arbitrarily to RAMPAC or should you continue 5-FU oxaliplatin? And the primary endpoint was PFS and they did improve the progression-free survival by about three months. And that was statistically significant. Any overall survival benefit? Yeah, the overall survival was like 10 point something versus 12.6. So we can fall back on this data as evidence that this is a strategy that may be supported in some patients if there's a need to delay the occurrence of progression. I'd like to revisit this by adding the platinum and 5-FU back in again on progression to understand if that improved overall survival. And I'd also like to understand quality of life on continuous chemotherapy because I think that might be an issue too. Agree. And having a biologic in there would never hurt either. Absolutely. Italians do good trials though. Agreed.